Hey Credit Warriors, welcome to the show. Now, if you're an investor who is playing the credit card game and you've ever thought, hey, how can I get rewarded through credit cards for investing? Well, you're in luck because that is exactly what we are gonna cover on the show today. We are gonna look at the best credit cards for investors, particularly how to leverage money invested in order to increase your rewards rates on your credit cards. And we'll talk about some additional perks that you can get simply by playing the credit card game from an investor's perspective. This is gonna be great for those who are looking to invest, who already invest, or who are looking to get rewarded for investing the money that you've already invested. Hmm, how many times have I said the word invest so far? <laughs> Leave your comments below. Oh, and this video is brought to you by Moomoo, but more on that later. So starting off, we have two Charles Schwab cards from American Express the Charles Schwab Investor Card and the Charles Schwab Amex Platinum. Now, both of these cards are available to those who maintain an eligible account with Charles Schwab Brokerage. This could be a Schwab One or Schwab General Brokerage account, Schwab Traditional, Roth or Rollover IRA. Now, the Charles Schwab Investor Card is a no annual fee card from American Express in association with Charles Schwab. There is a welcome bonus of $200 for spending $1,000 in the first three months. And here's the part that our investors are waiting for. You can earn 1.5% cash back on all your spending on the card that gets deposited into your Charles Schwab account so that you can then use it to invest. Now, while that's cool, it's not something you couldn't get elsewhere. So let's move on. Next up, we have the Charles Schwab Amex Platinum. This is a $695 annual fee card that is very similar to the regular Amex Platinum with most of the same, actually all the same benefits, Centurion lounges, hotel gold status, all of that. But investors can be rewarded for holding this card in a number of different ways. First of all, if you have $250,000 or more in Charles Schwab holdings, you can get a $100 statement credit to offset the annual fee. Then if you have a million dollars or more in Charles Schwab holdings, you can get a $200 statement credit to offset the annual fee. So that's great, but obviously you do have to have a significant amount of capital invested with Schwab. Now second, you can actually use your Amex membership rewards points earned from this card and all your other Amex cards to deposit as cash back into your Charles Schwab account. Now normally Amex lets you redeem points for cash back as a statement credit for 0.6 cents per point, which is the worst redemption rate for any kind of redemption with Amex points. We have a video actually, how to redeem Amex points for maximum value. It looks like this. I'll put it on the end card of this video if you wanna check it out. But with the Charles Schwab Amex Platinum, you can cash out your Amex points at 1.1 cents per point into your Charles Schwab account. It used to be 1.25 cents per point, but they decreased it a couple of years ago, sadly. However, this still works great, especially if you use it in conjunction with other Amex cards. For example, you earn points on the Amex Gold card and then you redeem them with the Charles Schwab Platinum card as cashback. So the Amex Gold, for example, it earns four points per dollar on grocery spending. That would then turn into 4.4% in cashback into your Charles Schwab account. Next up, we have some more Amex Platinum cards, the Morgan Stanley Amex Platinum and the Goldman Sachs Amex Platinum. So with the Morgan Stanley Amex Platinum, it has the same annual fee, 695, and the same benefits as the regular Amex Platinum, but you can actually get your entire annual fee waived by jumping through a couple of hoops. First, you need to set up a Morgan Stanley Access Investing account where you need to make a minimum deposit of $5,000. Then you can set up a Morgan Stanley Platinum Cash account. Note that this account is only free if you have a monthly deposit of $5,000 and a $25,000 minimum balance. Otherwise, the account will cost you $55 per month. And by having these two accounts, you will get a $695 annual engagement bonus, which covers the entire annual fee of the card. So the Morgan Stanley Amex Platinum card is great if you already meet those requirements. You have that amount of money or are able to have that amount paid into your account each month and you can set it up without too much headache. But for others, it's not really worth investigating if you don't meet those requirements already. Just to note though, the Morgan Stanley Access Investing Account will not be open to new applicants after December 1st of 2022. So if you do want this whole deal, do apply for the card and for that account before December 1st. And also, by the way, the Morgan Stanley Amex Platinum card has currently got a 125,000 point sign up bonus, and that is until January 11th, 2023. So it seems to be lining up with uh, where the account's closing to new applicants as well. So they're trying to get a few more people in maybe before it closes. The Morgan Stanley card has a couple of other benefits that are unique to it in that you can redeem your cash back directly into your Morgan Stanley account and you get your first authorized user card for free, which is actually quite a big perk, especially now that Amex is limiting guests in the Centurion Lounge uh, to those that spend over $75,000 on the card per year. But if you have an authorized user, they also get Centurion Lounge access. So this would be great 
for a couple where one person has the Amex Platinum and they make their husband or wife a authorized user and then you can both go in and you don't have to spend $75,000 on a card per year. Moving on to the Goldman Sachs Amex Platinum. This is an invite only card for Goldman Sachs employees and clients and you have to have over $10 million invested with Goldman Sachs in the case of a client. Now again, this card is very, very similar to the regular Amex Platinum, um, so it's not gonna be really that beneficial to most people, unless you're just someone who likes to have Goldman Sachs written on your card for the flex value. All right, now let's move on to an investor card that gives you a really high cashback rate on all your spending. But first, I know you guys are watching this video because you're interested in both credit cards and investing. And right now, I want to give you some value on the investing side of that. We got a great deal with the investing brokerage app, Moomoo, where if you sign up and fund a new account, you can get up to 15 free stocks. You get one chance to draw a free stock simply for opening an account, and that is worth between three and $2,000. Then you get four more free stock draws for depositing $100, and then if you deposit $2,000, you get 10 more. Now, obviously, it's the luck of the draw what you get, but Moomoo does actually tell you the probability of drawing your free stocks. There's approximately a 75% chance of getting a share of stock worth between three and $9.99. A 24.9% .9 chance of getting a share of stock worth between 10 and $99. And a 0.1% chance of getting a share of stock worth $100 or more. The probability of getting AZO or AAPL stock during this promotion is actually doubled. And one viewer of our show indeed commented that they got a free share of Apple, which is a stock worth over $100. Moomoo is commission free free for US residents trading US stocks and you can buy stocks, ETFs, and even options. You'll have access to professional grade charts and tools. You can learn from other investors and even get investing news right inside the app. So be sure to sign up for Moomoo with my link below and get up to 15 free stocks. Moving on to our next card, the Fidelity Rewards Visa Signature Card. Now this no annual fee card provided by Fidelity Brokerage offers you 2% cash back on all your purchases when you deposit your cash back into your eligible Fidelity account which is brokerage, IRA, HSA, 529, etc. So for every $2,500 you spend, you will earn $50 in cashback. However, this cashback rate can actually be increased depending on how much money you have invested with Fidelity. Basically how this works is if you have over $250,000 invested and professionally managed with Fidelity, you can enroll in Fidelity Rewards Plus, which provides extra perks for wealth management clients. So if you have 250,000 up to 1 million invested with Fidelity, you'll be in the gold tier. And the cashback that you earn on your Fidelity Rewards Visa Signature Card will jump to 2.25%. If you have 1 million up to 2 million invested, you'll be in the platinum tier and the cashback rate will be at 2.5%. And finally, if you have more than 2 million invested, you will be in the platinum plus tier and your cashback rate will be 3%. Now clearly this is a very lofty goal, so most people will not fall into this and I would say for the tiers under 3% there might actually be other cards out there that offer better value like you're going to see in just a moment but for that 3% tier if you're someone who does have $2 million invested with Fidelity and you want to get 3% cash back on all your spending this card's basically a no-brainer. Now let's look at some cards for people with more modest stock portfolios, especially if you already invest with Bank of America or Merrill Lynch. You can enroll in something called Bank of America Preferred Rewards. Now this is very similar to the Fidelity program, but the thresholds of the amount of money you have to have invested are much lower. So there are four tiers, the gold tier, platinum tier, platinum honors tier, and diamond tier. And if you have between 20 and 50,000 invested, you're part of the gold tier. That will boost the amount you earn in cashback or points on Bank of America credit cards by 25%. If you have between 50,000 and 100,000 invested, that's the platinum tier. Credit card rewards jump by 50%. If you have between 100,000 and 1 million invested, that's the platinum honors tier, and you get a 75% bonus on your credit card rewards. And finally, if you have between 1 million and 10 million invested. This is the diamond tier and you also get 75% bonus on your credit card rewards, but you do get a few other benefits. Now this is a lot more appealing than the previously mentioned Fidelity Rewards Plus because those amounts that you need invested are lower, so it appeals to a much wider demographic. It's also interesting to know that if you have between 100,000 and 1 million invested, you get the same credit card rewards bonus as if you had between one and 10 million. So potentially you could put 100,000 in there and be getting the same benefit than someone with 10 million, all right? At least on the credit card rewards. Take that, high net worth individuals. And here are all the cards that are eligible for having their rewards rates increased 
by preferred rewards. The no annual fee Bank of America customized cash rewards card, where you get 3% back on a category of your choice. The no annual fee Bank of America unlimited cash rewards card, 1.5% back on all purchases. No annual fee Bank of America travel rewards card, 1.5 points for every dollar spent. The $95 annual fee Bank of America premium rewards card, and the $550 annual fee Bank of America premium rewards elite card. Now you can look into all of those yourselves, but let's just give you a little example on how this works. If you had the no annual fee Bank of America unlimited cash rewards card, it earns 1.5% cash back on all your spending. Let's say you spend $1,000. Well, that's 1.5% cash back. It would earn you $15. However, if you're a gold tier, you spend $1,000, you get $18.75 since you get that 25% bonus. If you fall into the platinum tier, you would get $22.50 cash back. And if you were platinum honors or diamond tier, you would get $26.25 cash back since both those tiers earn a 75% bonus. Or in other words, you're now earning 2.625% cash back on all your spending. Now, let me ask you a question. You might be wondering, well, all these investing cards are good, but I invest in cryptocurrencies. Is there any way I can benefit from an investing linked credit card? Well, for our crypto enthusiasts, first, we have the Gemini credit card from the very popular and by the book crypto investing platform Gemini, started by the Winklevoss brothers. The Winklevi. I mean the Winklevi. Thanks, Zuck. You can earn rewards in the form of Bitcoin, Ethereum, and 60 other cryptocurrencies, and this is the only crypto credit card that deposits your crypto rewards immediately. And once crypto rewards are deposited in your account, you have full control control over them and you can decide whether to sell them or to hold and see if they increase in value. In terms of benefits, you get 3% back on dining up to $6,000 in annual spend, then 1%. You get 2% back on groceries and 1% back on all other purchases. The biggest risk with this card really is fluctuations in the crypto market if you were to hold on to the rewards. Let's give an example. Let's suppose you spent $1,000 on dining. With 3% back, you'd get $30. Let's say you earn that in the form of $30 worth of Bitcoin. Well, if you decide to hold that $30 of Bitcoin and there's a 5% decline in the price of Bitcoin, your $30 is now only worth $28.50. But in the same vein, if the price of crypto were to increase by say 5%, you have $31.50 or 10%, you'd have $33. And the crypto market is low right now, so chances are it could increase in the future, not financial advice. Lastly, for our crypto lovers, we have the Crypto.com Visa card. Now, Crypto.com basically partnered with Visa to create a card that allows crypto holders to use their crypto in everyday life. Users can transfer their crypto from their Crypto.com accounts to their debit card to make everyday purchases. And there are five cards on offer. You have the Midnight Blue, Ruby Steel, Royal Indigo and Jade Green. That's the same card, just two color choices. Then Frosted Rose Gold and Icy White, again, one card. And Obsidian, that's their black card. And each each card requires a different Kronos stake. Kronos, for those that may not know, is a token designed by Crypto.com and it's also called Crypto.com Coin and it's currently worth 11 cents a coin. So if you wanted to get the Obsidian, you'd have to hold $400,000 worth of Kronos. That would be 3,724,394 CRO in your Crypto.com wallet. And you'd have to hold that for six months. And this card would then provide you 5% back on all your purchases. While the Frosted Rose Gold Icy White would provide you 3% back in CRO rewards for a much lower CRO stake. You can also get some credits for things like Spotify and Netflix and lounge access at the highest level. And the more benefits you get obviously increase up to the Obsidian Black card. Now, who are these cards for? I would say they're great for people who have cryptocurrency investments already and just want to get some rewards out of their investments. I wouldn't really recommend anything below the rose gold icy white because 3% back is, you know, it's a great rate, but the cards below that, the rates you get on those, you could probably earn from other cards. And then obviously, if you're a crypto whale, the Obsidian is kind of a no-brainer, as long as you have the stomach to risk $400,000 in Crypto.com coin. Overall, guys, there are loads of options for those of you who invest and are on the hunt to be rewarded in credit card rewards for your investing. The Morgan Stanley Amex Platinum, the Fidelity card, and also the Goldman Sachs Amex Platinum are kind of gonna be out of reach for most people, but there may be some high net worth individuals watching this who would be interested in those cards you know who you are. From the ones we mentioned, the Charles Schwab Amex Platinum and the Bank of America cards are much more achievable for the average person. In the case of Bank of America, you only need $20,000 invested to be part of the gold tier and get that 25% bonus on your rewards. The Gemini credit card and the Crypto.com debit cards will probably be a no-brainer for some crypto investors. Obviously, if you're a crypto whale, the Obsidian card 
is going to look quite attractive to you. All right, guys, what do you think? Are there any cards from this list that you like the look of? Maybe some of them you have already, or are there any we should add to the list? Leave your comments below. Don't forget to get up to 15 free stocks for opening and funding an account with Moomoo. Link for that is in the description section as well. Please subscribe if you're new. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.